everyone, I'm Chika and you're welcome to WeChat, sponsored or powered by Landway, one of Nigeria's leading real estate investment companies and powerhouses. Now today we're getting chatty about the reinvent and that's essentially why it's important that we begin to see everything differently, the immediate need to build business models differently and the quintessential skills that are needed to operate successful real estate businesses and generally all businesses. And today in the house, we have a team of incredible key players who are steadily flying the bar in their various industries. So first with me today is one of Nigeria's biggest and award-winning lifestyle and entertainment bloggers in Nigeria. She is the founder and creator of Olori Supergirl. Um, over the years, she has amassed tons and thousands of followership. And so this has made her blog one of the go-to blogs in Nigeria for everything fashion, entertainment, gossip, and lifestyle. Please welcome Oluwa Tosi Ajibade. It's good to have you here. I love your outfit, by the way. That skirt is so going home with me. Also in the house today, we have um, a very phenomenal lawyer and creative arts entrepreneur um, who is also the CEO of Aboriginal Music. Now, he, in the last, over a decade, actually, yes, he's been very actively involved in the fast-paced Nigerian entertainment industry, acting as a legal consultant, uh, counsel to creative artists, and also a negotiator for project financing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ihane Ahigbe. <laughs> that name is sort of a tongue twister, but I got it. A Nigerian, Ihane Ahigbe. So good to have you here. And finally, in the house today, we have a powerful dynamite realtor who is one of our top performers, beautiful, beautiful woman inside and out, and also the CEO of Tricot Properties. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Trinita Akpan. I nailed it in the back. All right, so let's get talking. Um, I was recently um, online reading a book by one of my very favorite um, real estate um, brokers. He's actually the biggest one of the biggest real estate um, brokers in the world, Frederick Eklon. And so he wrote a book, The Sell, How to Sell Anything. And he says in the book that every person, every real estate player, or essentially every business professional, should spend at least 10% or more of their earnings on personal grooming and appearance. What are your thoughts? Because I see everyone looking so fly, like looking like a billion bucks. So I'm like, this is true. But honestly, what are your thoughts? So it kind of, this, this, what do you this think? is my family, this is a minority here. But you mean you know even in the world, I mean women by far numbers, statistics. I mean, what's the ratio? Five women to one man or ten and, men to one and man? That's why you're <laughs> you know, considering that. Okay. No, not at all. But um, look, truth is um is an old saying clothes make the man and also um, dress to impress. People take you more seriously when you look and sound like you know you're talking about like you mean business. So there's a tendency to go with what appears to be well packaged because it gives the impression that you put enough effort into impressing the person and therefore there is something more for them to listen to. If someone comes to me, and it's, 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 a, it's a stereotype, if someone comes to me looking like they can't take care of themselves, I am highly unlikely on average to listen to them. It's, it's the old cliche, first impressions no, last. So it's not the most important part of business but mm. it, is, it is key especially if you're looking for investors and all that people are not going to see what's inside of you if, if they don't want to get it they can't get past what what's outside of you yeah but so is there any such a, is there any such thing as an overkill for example i mean <laughs> I, I i'm sure i can tell if you're coming to me with a business pitch and I'm, I'm sure there's such thing as an overkill like you, it's so obvious that you're trying so hard to make an impression or make an make a, make, make 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 an overly extremely you know, out there. Well, well, it's, well, it's um, most often than not, the impression of a stranger is formed in one second, or well, less than one second. But in the bid to dress well mm -hmm. or to put out your self image right there, mm -hmm. you need to also be conservative as a business person. Okay. Be conservative, dress neatly, dress smartly. Okay, I'm going to use myself as a woman. Please <laughs> 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 don't play on the jewelry. Okay. I'm putting on this. Some other person would have put on that. Yeah. That's out there. 
that is smarter to quiet this down and bring this up. And your general outlook, depending on your body figure, how do you dress? Is it over over the top, hugging you in all places? Or is it sex in a way that can prefer you as a professional? Remember, when you are a business person, you are asking for somebody's money. Mm -hmm. The person needs to know, can I trust my money in this person's hands? It's very, very important to put your best foot forward every time, even if you're being casual on a Saturday morning. It's very important. Then again, your casual pictures on social media. Oh, I have read so know all about that. <laughs> that employers, mm -hmm. employers these, these days have actually admitted that they go to candidates' social media pages Check just to have an idea. But the overall sense of presence, yeah. So when you are out there hanging out with your friends at the beach in church, how do you put up yourself? Is your cleavage out for the men? Do you suck? Okay, so now, so, so now talk, 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 talking about social media, I mean, I, I'd like to, 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 to ask to borrow this off from it and to say, because um, I know that you built a successful, like a huge successful business off of social media. What is one reason you would say that most businesses fail? Social media is a business. I mean, you can use social media media to promote your business, but in, in itself, social media is a business. I mean, it's a money-making business. So why do you think that most businesses fail, especially for startups? Okay, um, I'll say for, for beginners or for startups, most people don't really know or they don't have they don't have an end goal of what they are really doing on social media. So for some people, when they open an account, they don't even know where to start from. They don't know how to even get people to even start following them. And for every account to open up social media, they might need a new platform tomorrow. Everybody will just run their own following and start from zero. So building, you're building every day, you're building every hour, you're building every second. And uh, one of the key things that people would need when, when they are actually they're, they're, promoting their business on social online, or say online, is for them to have content. So content is very key. Content is what drives the engagement that will bring followers and that's what retains them to for them to stay longer. So we all we all have followers on Twitter, Facebook, we have Instagram, we have YouTube subscribers, you know we have LinkedIn for professionals. So how do you stay, how do you make them stay on your page? What do you do exactly? So for a business owner, for a business person, what are you doing every day to make sure that your followers are, 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 are intact or they're actually growing on a daily basis? So you need to focus on your content. The content comes before the followers. Don't think about the followers before the content. All right, so recently, um, Ihane, I had come across an interview that you did online with Five Music and there's a quote that you made that absolutely caught my eye. And I quote, it says, artists need to understand that music is a business. However, investors need to understand that the talent isn't easily structured. So let's talk about music as a business. Do the principles that apply to most businesses also apply you know, to music as a business? Yes, they do, because fundamentally, in every business, you invest in something and have a profit. And, as, and so there are basic rules and regulations with regards to profit. You, you invest, you put in structures to nurture and protect your investment, you accept a degree of risk, and all things being equal, if you're fortunate, you're successful. However, with music, entertainment, and what I call the creative arts, mm. the tangible differences are dealing more with the human element, with the creative element. Now, creativity as a whole is difficult to, for investors to understand because it's not tangible. I can't give you a song on its own. You can hear a song. I can give you this, this, this mark, but I can't give you the songs. I'm giving you air and you can't see, you can't hold it. So it's a bit more subjective. Now, because it's also pretty much in itself the good, you're dealing with someone's intellectual property, their minds work, you need to find a way of convincing, of understanding that individual and explain to service providers, what the better word, who are not as structured because creativity is difficult to. It's the same, the more you try and constrain creativity, you know, the more you, you diminish it. So you've got to find that, that midpoint between the structured element for security and stability and success and the need for freedom of expression. It's tricky and something that I'm still learning, but I think it's, it's very doable. 
Awesome. So Teresa, talking about the real estate business, what, what do you honestly think that right now, looking at the trends, because real estate has changed so much in terms of trends, in terms of developments, in terms of how people run that particular sector in that business. So what do you think that every realtor right now or real estate player should be doing to leverage on the new evolution of the real estate industry if you have it? Okay, um, after all said and done, when I mean after all said and done, I'm talking about you have known about your product knowledge, you know the location, you know all there is pricing, all there is to do. I'm going to borrow a sentence from Olori Supergirl. She talked about processes. Get it right before marketing. Okay? So, how do you leverage as a realtor? You have known all there is to know. But, how do you get, out, get yourself out there and get your clients to trust you? Most important thing is your relationship. After you have built your personal image, your relationship, how do you handle your clients from the pre-sales your interview, your interaction with the client, to meet sales and to post sales. I find so many realtors out there who immediately after fees have paid, have been paid, they are up onto the next client, leaving behind the one who has just completed a transaction with them. But that one can bring referrals 10, 20. So why chase a million out of the bush when you have one or two? Cater for them well. Secondly, technology. Things are changing every day. The way we used to do businesses before, the brick and mortar kind of business is no longer the way. Nowadays, people don't want to, they can search online for anything. They don't want to leave their houses or their offices and come and inspect or see what you have to do. So, and that's one thing I like about Langley. They have this thing called a virtual tour. So you can send that to your clients. He gets to see right from his bedroom or from his office where it is as interested in buying before he takes a decision. Keep up with the relationship. Number three, networking. The money is in your list. It's on the people that you know. Where do you go to? Where do you hang up? How do you make friends? And how do you leverage on those relationships? That's it. Very true. Leveraging on relationships. Very, very true. Okay, so let's talk about your book, Olori Supergirl. I've been itching to get a copy of this book. And I've read the reviews about the book. Very awesome. Very beautifully written. Olori Supergirl's book, actually, from social media hero to social media misfits. And I, when I hear misfits, I mean, the images that come to her, is just, they're just funny. So, so, so who essentially is a social media hero? Okay, um, they, okay, so I'll start from the, the title of the book, okay. which is Olori Supergirl from Social Misfits to Social Media Hero. Yeah. And it's basically about my story and how everything all started. I mean, 10 years ago, nobody would have known that maybe Facebook, we can actually make money from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or whatever it is that we have online today. And um, back then, it was just basically going, checking your messages from your cousins or your friends, using your Yahoo Messenger, and now everything has changed. And Back then, I was not really into all of this. I was just, okay, it was just something that was just passing by for me. And then I, I had this passion to just to pass out information online. And I would, I usually do that on my, using my Facebook account. Mm -hmm. So, and from the engagement, I saw that people wanted more, people wanted to know more. And then that gave me like a sense of responsibility to make sure that I get them the right information. And that was how I found myself, you know, here. So over the years, I've built the brand from nothing to something. And that's how it from, became the business and yes, of a time consuming hobby. I totally yes. love that. So, um, for, so for building, building a brand for 10 years is not really easy. It's more or less like having a fiscal office. It's more or less like having a fiscal building. You know, so, I mean, if you, if you raise the child, you know, back then it's from 2008, you should know how old the child should be right now. So that was, so that was, so that was where the, everything all started. And for me, and I, we were talking about branding and imaging, you know, the first, <laughs> the first uh, time. It was more or less like putting myself out there and also making sure people take me serious. So, back then, you know, if you, if you introduce yourself as a blogger, you see you as jobless, see you as um, useless. So how, so how were you able to... Yeah, just to change that. narrative and change perspective. I mean, she saw... Single-handedly change and then, Yes, because the thing is, that it's what you want. You mm -hmm. just go after it and chase after it. I mean, for everybody that I know, to the people that I've met before, we didn't know each other from any way. Every, I mean, we all maybe met ourselves online. So, because in, in real life, I actually have few friends. So, definitely for everybody that I've, I've done business with or anybody that I've, I've done transactions with, we all met online. So, how do you present yourself? How do you let them know that you, they will need to take you serious? So, everything, everything changed you know, over the years. You know, like, I actually even evolved.
how to you know move away from the shy person to you know being the person out there so my work and my personal life are just different but because of what i need to get and the things i need to do i just had to chase after them awesome phenomenal yeah. all right so let's talk about the narrative as it is right now in your line of business and um, i bet you're a creative art entrepreneur you provide legal counseling what is the narrative right now especially in the context in the nigerian context of the business that you do, what is the present, current narrative? And if you had to reinvent, like if you had all factors at your disposal, what would you reinvent, not just yourself, but yourself as you fit into your business? How would you reinvent what we have now to a futuristic, appealing scenario of what you would like to see or what you'd like to have? So let's talk about the narrative now and future... Um, if you had to build the future world, utopian world, if you might have it. <laughs> Wakanda. <laughs> I know, forever. Let's talk about now and then. Like, on now and future. Yeah. future. I think where we are right now is we are, I believe we are on the cusp. I honestly believe we are on the cusp of the golden age hmm. for Nigeria and by extension African um, creativity. Largely because Nigeria is the, it's literally the power of Africa as far as population, potential, and resources. We have the fourth. Okay, because I squint at you when you say Nigeria is the. We have the potential. Yeah, yeah, yeah potential. We have, the yeah, numbers, yeah. We, have the, we, have, we have the biggest um, entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, you name five okay. African, like 10 African um, musicians or actors, okay. the top seven, eight will be Nigerians. In fact, the best rapper in the world from Africa, MI, is Nigerian. You know, let's not downplay our success. Okay. But I think we're on the cusp because over the last five, ten years, we've slowly moved into something that we can be proud of as Nigerians. You, know, you go to most clubs right now, you listen to most Nigerian music, you go into most cinemas, we're on the cusp of the golden age. And there's a lot of potential there. What I think is necessary on the business end would be more public private partnerships um, so that the infrastructure needed or at least the burdens that make it difficult to really pro propel our industry. We need more tax breaks, we need more incentives from the government. I also think we need more reaching across um, the divide between the creative sector, the business sector, and, and, and the public sector because we all need to put our hands together. Uh, I use Wakanda because if you actually watch that movie, it's a system where the private individual, the reigning government, and the science and technology came together to create, a, to create a, a, a nation where everybody could flourish. Well, science killed Martha. Mm -hmm. And the way he got his child at the throne. So, I wouldn't want to rocket jump into the future. I think the best things happen, as Lori said, by building. There's a golden era coming up right now. We have our movies being shown on, on movies by Kolea uh, for Lion, being shown on different um, movies and brought and also on, on airlines. So our, our, our content is being streamed across like people like TV, we have chocolate city, EME, moving to different areas of, of, of entertainment, size music, also doing events management. We just need to, and this is, this is a Nigerian thing, we just need more simplicity. We need better better infrastructure, we need better economic policies because this industry employs the youth. So we need to have those dialogues between the creative side, the business side, the legal side, and the, and the government side. Mm. We do that over the next 10 years. I kid you not. We will look at things like, like China and say, you're done. We're right behind. We are there because well, Africa alone should be our market. Nigeria first, what 80 million people. Come on. So I wouldn't change it. I just think it's all there. We just need to go there and build it. And I look at, so that's a little super girl yourself. And even the gentleman behind this mic, doing what he loves doing with tools at his disposal. And I see potential. I just think we need to just work more to make it easier for potential to turn into reality. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so Madam Trinita, let's just piggyback off what um, he said and 
still delving into the same question. I know that real estate has changed so much. Right now, there are new trends in real estate that are unbelievable. The developments are coming up. I mean, if you had to picture what our real estate industry would be like, say, five, ten years from now, what, what exact um, scenarios would you visibly paint in terms of how we would develop our industry and what we expect to see in Nigeria that would put us really out there to compete with? Not compete, but you know, if it were to be a parallel for places like Dubai, or you know, what what would you picture? Nigerians are again? looking out for affordability. They are looking out for structure. They are looking out for security, and they are also looking out for te um, technologically driven environments, like you have in Dubai. Smart homes. Smart homes. Then you have a teeming population of young professionals, single professionals, people who are within the age group of 30 to 40, unmarried. Then they are look, also looking out for cozy, and cozy apartments. But what you find presently is either a four bedroom, a big mansion, or a two bedroom. The market for that demographic is not yet there. And so we're asking developers to come up with something to fit into that market space that also encompasses all of these things I have mentioned in terms of security, structure, and environment, and, and, and technology. And technology. Mm -hmm. Since everything, nowadays businesses are done online. Nobody has to drive to distances to to come to to complicate or to transact. So people want to bring the seats from the comfort of their home and get it done. Secondly, the market is also looking for a face. You as a realtor, do you feel, do you make your client feel you? Do you feel the pulse of your client? What is this client? It's more, it's more about the developer now. So personal connection? Yes. What does your client want in terms of budget? and location. So somebody has said, I have this for sale. And you have to push it because the client really wants that. What is he looking for in terms of durability, solidity of structure? So we come back again to our developers and our block industry makers. What we see these days are, I buy a home, I can't leave it for more than two years or three years because the structure is falling apart right on me. Hmm. So really and truly in the real estate industry, the developers have a lot of work to do. And we are, as, as, a, as a group, we have the Real Estate Development Association of Nigeria and Reda. We are constantly talking about that. In terms of affordability, we are pushing for mortgage facilities. And that's beginning to come up because these days you are hearing a lot of banks now offering mortgages. So to sort out the issue of affordability, okay, and um, that's basically it. So what I mean, if we can toe this line consistently with the government's backing, be it whoever is coming into election in the next 2019, um, 2019, we don't want the next person coming to tear down what has been built over the last person. So if we continue this space within the next five years, oh, yeah, Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> I have very strong sentiments. Ooh, no, so talking about social media, um, recently, um, Max Zuckerberg on Facebook, essentially, has announced that. They didn't announce, but it, it came on the news that they had made quite a huge loss. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and, and, I mean, it's murky waters. I guess they, I guess they, of course, for story coming, because even they had kind of made their own internal projections as to what um, their books would be saying. But what do you think... I mean, going by the fact that it's very hard to say, you know, for example, how Instagram will do in the next quarter. How do you think that would affect the way that people do business on social media? How would you, what would be a safety net, for example, regardless of the rise and fall? Okay. What would be a safety net for people? Okay, so, uh, so um, what I would say is that for everyone who has a business online or social media, you should start building that email list. So for any any platform can, can shut down tomorrow, we're seeing platforms come and go. 
I've been on so many platforms. I can't even remember the names. Like I actually right remember some, okay. but like I've been on those platforms, and of course, we've seen them leave, and they've seen some stay, you know, over the years. So anything can happen, to regardless of whatever platform it is. I remember Facebook owns WhatsApp and Instagram. Hmm. So anything can happen to her. So what you need to do basically is just to start is just to build your email list. Start, you know, um, I would say start transferring your followers online and start requesting for their email addresses and their phone numbers, which is very, very important. So that you can actually have your own email list. So email marketing will never die. Once you have those lists, you are building from hundred to one thousand to ten thousand. Before you know it, you have two hundred thousand. Before you know, two million, and that's it. They are your contacts. You actually, you know, got them from the right you know, source or something like that. It's, that is the reason why I mean, sometimes people want to have events or anything. They buy, have to buy data bits, okay? Buy data mm-hmm. bits and all that. So, where do you think they got them from? So, why not just use the same um, system to just, you know, tell your followers, tell them to invite them to win something. So, let's say, for instance, oh, the first um, 10 people who gets this right, you get a freebie from us. From the freebie, you make sure that it gets their email address and their phone number, their names. You add them to your email list. Before you know it, you are building. You are building. So if case anything happens tomorrow, your business is not, is not affected. You still have, you know, you still have contacts with those people that have been there since when everything all started. So, so that's actually very smart thinking. Now I, I'm going to throw this at you because I, I actually yeah. saw this on your Instagram page okay. and you had posed this question. Would you? Ever buy property, say in your spouse's name or in your fiance's name? No. Or your I won't. Yeah, I won't. I'm Why? Sorry. Okay, so how about if you've been married for 15, 20 years? I mean, you've built a life. You, just, you asked the question. I'm okay. single, so, but you asked the question, and, okay. I, I, and, the, and the response was back to you as a single person. I would not. Even if I'm in a relationship, I would not. Why? Why should, why should I? <laughs> I you don't go. get carried away by emotions. No, really. And, Sorry, emotions. Uh, is, 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 is it essentially a trust that, issue or something that's just I not can't advisable really say, to do? If I'm single and I'm not married, I'm okay, so how about if you're say, married, for example? I can't really say. Right. I'd rather buy maybe my kid's name, but I'm not really sure. About yeah, I see that you're <laughs> you're <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. From a legal point of view, when I'm about business, I want to go into my name or my or my wife's name. All the trust for the kids for one very simple reason it's, it's always try and leave assets for your, for your dependents so while I'm alive I have to enjoy the property but once I'm dead I want my family taken care of uh, <clears throat> I can sell the property I can rent it out so yeah I'm having a problem with it because if you want to get married to somebody you basically need to pledge you know your future together and you are building a family so I, I have no problem. My house at least. This <laughs> is my wife's name, so I beg. <laughs> look after me. <laughs> no, it's look, it's it's it's. Um, I get the point. As a bachelor, I wouldn't do it because you know there is less of a reason to well. So there's more probability that things may not work out and they work out. So it's it's a risk to put something that belongs to you that you've invested and worked hard for. In a partner to whom you're not even bound to legally. Like if, if I have a business and I put up the property as a shared thing, that's my, that's my business partner. But my girlfriend, my fiance, no. But my wife, one of my children, what's the business going to happen? You leave me tomorrow, you take the property, the kids are fighting. So, in, so a way, the, in a way, part of me is wondering if maybe if White also said no, because you know, sometimes a man to woman. It's kind of different from when it's so for example a woman might say oh i have reservations about buying property in her husband's name but the husband might have no reservation buying properties in do, do, do you think that's the case <laughs> is that what's happening here because <laughs> she's saying no i can't buy my husband's name why is it oh i can buy my wife's name do, do you think it's a function of the gender really and truly that is what we have come to say no the women probably be coming from the point of view he may leave me and go ahead and marry someone he, he may just marry a second wife. He may say he's done, or God forbid, he passes on. His family will come and take everything away from him. That has been the African culture. That's what we've suffered over the years. Our mothers, 
have won our generation. We have we find ourselves born in the But it's changing. Generation. We, women are walking yeah. away from marriages and relationships. Yeah. Women are being as promiscuous as men. We are not More. supposed to. We are, you know, absolutely, we are not supposed to encourage that. <laughs> no, no, no. Not, but this, it, the, 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 the facts speak for themselves. We're not encouraging that. Well, what I was to say, I'm going to tell his life. Okay. While you were single, while you property, in your name, mm-hmm. with next of kin of your family, not a partner. Not somebody who is not yet legally bound to you. Mm. And after you have gotten married, whether as a woman or as a man, I agree within yourselves. Are we going to buy property? Mr. Kenichuku and Mrs. Ngozi, your son. Mm. There's no Mr. and Mrs. here because anybody could be a Mrs. tomorrow, another person could be a Mr. tomorrow. What happens to that property? Next of kin always should be in the name of your child if that child is not yet of age then next of kin should be in the next trusted person with a clause the moment the child comes of age all transfer the child to goes to the child and that's the logical point okay thank you well said um, and on that note we come to a successful beautiful end of the way chat session i had fun chatting with this this giant in the house. Thank you so much, so sweet, everybody, for coming through. I know it was, you know, tech shadow. Thank you so much, Hane, Aiwe, for coming through today. I'm going to finish Thank you so much for blessing us all with your rich wealth of knowledge and know-how. And that's how it's been. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page. Follow us on all that stuff. Facebook, Instagram, and everything else. This is Chika, signing out.